make your portraits pop with this simple trick. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how to make your portraits pop using masks in Lightroom. Masking is a quick and simple way to improve your portraits to give them that extra pop. Let's jump into Lightroom and get started. So here's the image we're gonna be working with today. It's got a base edit on it and this is without any masks. So let's jump over to a masking panel and start making this image pop. And we're gonna kick things off by shaping the light a little and drawing a little bit more attention to our model. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select our model using the select subject feature. And then once we've got our model selected, the things that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slightly increase the exposure ever so slightly, uh, nothing too major. As you can see, if we go a little bit too far, it looks a bit unnatural. But we're tr what we're trying to do is just draw a little bit more attention to our model and make them pop a little bit more in comparison to the background. Once we've done the exposure, what I like to do is reduce the contrast. And sometimes I think this just helps to make some of the light and dark areas not as harsh. So when you boost that exposure that little bit, it just takes off the edge that you can sometimes get. Um, the other thing that I like to do with the model is typically I do, in the image as an overall, I do reduce the clarity a bit. So what I like to do with the model is then boost the clarity to kind of counteract that. So I'm gonna just lift this up to around 35 maybe, 34, 35, somewhere around there, just so we're pulling back some of those details that we may have lost um, when we reduce the clarity in the overall image. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring in a radial gradient. And what my idea here is, um, we see we've got this light coming in behind our model that's giving a nice little bit of rim light on the back of the hair here. I want to try and embellish that a little bit more. So I'm gonna use a radial gradient. If we just zoom out so we've got a little bit more canvas to work with. Um, what you can do when you're using the radial gradients is if you click and drag out, you have um, a free form radial gradient. But if you hold shift, that will kind of constrain the gradient to be a perfect circle and then what you can do as well is if once you've placed your gradient if you can't see your anchor points or your control points of the mask what you can do is just come in here and you might have show pins and tools on never or when it's selected so at the minute I've got it always set to always um, but show pins and tools if you can't see where your mask is affecting so once we've got a mask in there, the next thing that I like to do is I typically boost the exposure somewhere between probably 0.5 and a full stop. And once I've done that, I'll then also reduce the clarity and I reduce the clarity quite a lot, sometimes going as far as minus 100. The reason for this is it kind of just gives you this kind of ethereal glow from that window kind of replicating maybe a mist filter or something like that. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is subtract the subject from this selection just so it's not impacting our model's face. It's just remaining behind the model. So once we've done that, I'm just going to drop that down a little bit further. And the, the great thing about kind of shaping light this way in Lightroom is the fact that you can go back in and tweak it as much as you like and you can tweak it until your heart's content. So if you want it a little bit wider or bigger, you can kind of account for that. Um, let's pull this back over. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the background itself. So I'm gonna come up to create mask and then select background. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm not necessarily gonna impact the lighting in this instance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color of the background ever so slightly, just to kind of create a little bit more color contrast between our model and our background. Now I've got our background selected. I'm just gonna come down to our color. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drop our temperature ever so slightly. Again, with all of these, we don't wanna to go too far. Always edge on the side of caution with these kind of things. Once we drop the temperature a little bit to kind of make it a little bit more blue, so we've got the oranges in the skin of our model, and then we've got the now a more bluey background. One thing that I like to do when I am using these masks is kind of think about the color wheel and how colors relate to one another. So by just this little tweak to the temperature, we've been able to move that background color to the more blue. So we're getting a greater color contrast between that background blue and our model's skin tones. So the final thing that I want to do to this image is I want to use a linear gradient, same way that we can with um, the radial gradients. We just come up to um, create a new mask, linear gradient, 
And then what I want to do is this left hand side of the image, what I want to do is try and darken that half of the image off a little bit, just again to kind of draw our eye to the, the model. So once we've got our mask in, I'm just gonna pull over ever so slightly and just gonna stop just before we get to our model's arm. And then with this one, all I'm gonna do is just reduce the exposure slightly, um, maybe somewhere up to a stop. And by doing that, it just helps create a little bit, um, almost like a vignette would, um, but we're having a little bit more control over placing the, the, the gradients in the locations that we want. So we're having a bit more control over that. By using the linear gradients and the radial gradients in various places, we can actually shape that light to look the way that we want. And that's like the ultimate way that I like to think about these is shaping the light and using the masks to actually shape the light. Where is it coming from? Where will it be darker? And then using that, I'll shape the light to enhance it, to create a little bit more of a dramatic effect. So now we've um, reduced our exposure ever so slightly over there. Let's just take a look back through all the masks that we've added and let's take a look at how they've actually each impacted the image as a whole. So if I turn all of these off. So again, starting with our subject mask on our model, let's turn that back on. And that just creates a extra separation between the model and our background. And next up, let's turn on our background, which creates a little extra color contrast between our background and our model. Then let's turn on our um, window light mask. And this one just creates a little bit of detail contrast between the image through the reduced clarity and increased clarity. And then next up, let's add our um, left hand area as the way, like I say, the way I looked at this is the way it's fading off into the background. It would just naturally get darker anyway, the further it got from our model. So let's just zoom in and let's take a look at all of our masks off. And then the difference that our masks have made. And it's pretty impressive to think that this is where we started and this is where we finished. And all this has been achieved by just using masks. So there we have it, a quick and simple way using masks to make your portraits pop. Masks are pretty powerful and it's pretty impressive how much you can use them to make your subjects pop in your images that little bit more. And we've done nothing too crazy here, but the difference is massive. If you like this video, I do have other videos on the channel taking a look at things like skin softening, making eyes pop in your portraits, that kind of thing. And if you'd like to check those out, I'll place a card at the top so you can check those out. And with all that said and done, I'll catch you in the next one.